audio test. So we already started the morning with looking for tools for the first five minutes because they're everywhere. But anyway, we're back on the Camaro and going to try to get the engine out today and finally see what happened to this thing. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I got the little tool to pull the oil pressure sensor out, try to use that lift plate and uh, get this thing out of here. We still got to unhook the transmission, all that. So we're going to go ahead and get started on ripping this thing out of here. We're going to get this thing out today. Yeah. <laughs> as you get to it. All right. So we'll go ahead and get this out, get that lift plate, and then we'll get raise the car up and have fun pulling the tranny out of this thing. It's not the best. It's got one of those carbon fiber like protector plates on it. So I actually have a few holes drilled in the firewall on this car to help access with the transmission bolts. And I'll show you guys those here in a few minutes, but at least we're past that step. And now we can hopefully get this thing on here and see if, see if it's gonna work. I think we can go a bolt here a bolt, oh, I'm on that bolt now. We'll get that out. But I'll be able to go a bolt here, here, here. And maybe there, I don't know. We'll find out. Might not be ideal. Note to self, uh, get a plate that's designed for the engine you're pulling. <laughs> Although uh, Gen 5 and Gen 4 stuff or Gen 3 stuff is similar, they're definitely not exactly the same by any means. But. I'll go ahead and get that little bolt out of there and we'll go from there. I got three good bolts in and now that back one we used a washer to kind of hold it. Not ideal. We'll start picking it up and see it. Hopefully that'll hold it. I uh, definitely need to get me an LS lift plate. Good thing I know a place to get some. So we'll try that. Uh, should be better than using a motorcycle strap like what I've done in the past, but still not perfect. We're going to go ahead and get the hood off and then we'll go inside and start getting the tranny in done. So this is probably the last time a real hood might be on the car. And we can go up and lay it on top of the car for right Got it? Since we might uh, end up going with a Zeus hood possibly in the future, a little bit lighter. Plus, whenever I go to cut all this stuff out of here, there'd be a big gap between that hood and the windshield. So I'll have to get some sort of extended hood anyway to come up and touch the windshield. So good chance that's the last time the little hood will be on here, at least that one. Going way backwards here, really breaking this thing all the way down. <laughs> Whoa, hey Carter. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I <laughs> just look back, I see a camera. All right, we're gonna get, actually before we go to the inside of the car and start undoing stuff, we're gonna uh, get the converter loosened up, slid back, and we start working on the transmission, which that's a little bit of a, a little bit from down here, a little from inside the car, a little back and forth on both of them. Well, only one bolt from up here that I got to get undone. The rest are from underneath the car. It's super tied up against that tunnel, especially with that like carbon fiber shield. Got my contraption. We'll try to try to get to it. I have one just hole drilled down here on the firewall. A little trick of the trade on getting transmissions out. I've been fighting this thing for the last five minutes, so I'm going to uh, wrap this around here, help hold it kind of in place as it gets up in there, and try to get on that top bolt of the transmission. So hopefully. Hopefully this will do what I need it to do now. It was just flopping over and I couldn't, couldn't quite get to it. Having fun uh, one turn at a time there, Alex? One quarter turn at a time? <laughs> oh yeah, let me tell you, it's this, so much fun. Pulling a tranny out of this thing is just not the uh, most, not the most yeah. ideal. And the thing is, is it's a power glide. It's actually smaller than a six, 4L60, but. I don't know, with that, uh, with that case on it, it's still pretty tight. Let's see if we can get this thing up on yar. Oh. Hey. Come on. Oh, look at that. I think you should have drilled a hole for this bolt. Worked like a champ. Yeah, that one could definitely probably use a use another hole. There we go. There we go. The thing is I'll pull this off and I'll be like two threads to go. Maybe. All right. Well, that bolt's undone, but it's too long to come out of the hole. I don't know if it's fully loose or not. I guess I can get from it from the top of the uh, engine. I can reach down in there with my hand and try to, it looks like it's out. 
We can just reach up in there and try to push it back. That bolt should be loose though all the way. It felt like it. Dang, double speed right there. So we're gonna go ahead and get the motor mounts loosened up while we're down here. Pretty much just that one little bolt at the top of the tranny, just verify I can reach down from the top, make sure it's completely loose. Then we should be able to pull this thing out of here. This thing is dirty. The car's like 100 and I think 150 or 60,000 mile chassis. And then all this alcohol system will come out, methanol kit. This freaked me out the other night. I was laying in bed and I was like, oh, I left that hot wire off the alternator just dangling. But it has the master shut off in the back of the car. Yeah. But I was sitting there in bed thinking about it. I was like, oh no, I almost came out here like freaking one in the morning to deal with it. So I was like, I don't want it to catch fire. Nope, of course not. Like I said, it'd probably still have one or two threads in it. Hmm. Gosh dang it. This always sucks. So we got a little bit of trickery with this here. So I finally got that last bolt out of the back of the uh, engine there. Then we got a little trickery with this thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was kind of worried about. So this doesn't have the longest arm. We got to get to like here is the pickup point, one of these two. So I probably have to push the car. So whenever I did it in the single car garage, this was literally like right here to be able to get it. And then as I peeled it, picked it up and took it out. So I'm gonna have to roll the front of the car like out off the lift a little bit. And then we can come in with that from like this angle, hopefully. Well, we can do that. Or the front end of the car's got to come off anyway, so we can just strip the entire front end down to the core and get that much more. Get uh, just at least yeah, to like right here, probably. To here, yeah. That'd gain us a little bit. Yeah, we pop could the just pop the <laughs> pop the front bumper off. That'd get us probably what we need. So maybe we'll just do that real quick. Is just pop the front bumper off. It needs to come off anyway, so. Strip the whole front end apart, so that way it's out of the way anyway and then get the engine out of it. Yeah. That'll work. Let's do that real quick. Very nice. All right, well, let's see what happens here, boys. That's as far forward as we can go. Hey, it looks like we're almost over the center hook. Can we go down more with the lift or? Yeah, that's about right. We should be good. Go ahead and bring, we bring the jack down a little bit. This is going to be interesting. We'll see. No, hold on. That ain't going to work. We're going to have to go off the pole. So we can try to go off this one. Hopefully it doesn't let the engine rotate back too far, though. We'll see. If not, we'll have to come up with something. I could probably do something with this chain, though, too, where I move this chain up, and then we can get this above it where it's just the chains riding right, right here. Let's try that. There we go. That's the ticket. Another reason it'll be nice to cut the cow out of this car. Now we're lifting up on the chassis, so we gotta work the motor mount bolts out of it. We might be in. We might have bound them up too. Eh, don't feel too too bad. Man, I didn't put too much tension on this thing. Okay. Well, let's uh. I don't know if I need to go up, down, left, right. Let's tell you in a second what I do with my fixel. Fix it. Fix it all. I'm gonna tap on, tap on that motor mount bolt and see if it'll start to.
coming up slow. Which the tranny's coming up with it, so then I need to get, I need to raise the, the tranny jack too. Yeah. By a lot, actually. Okay, go ahead and raise it up some more if you want. I don't want to raise it up until you know you had that tranny. Oh, I'm good. I'm secured here. I'm gonna raise it with you as you go up, cause you gotta go another little bit. Ta da! That's why I want to make sure the Yahtzee! <laughs> All right. Oh, go up some more. All right. Come out. The wiring is caught up in there a little bit. Get this out and around that. This comes with the engine. Let me uh, grab my pan. As we rock it back and forth when we... There we go. This is what I'm talking about whenever you guys go out the top. If you've done the stand-up radiator mod, Gives you just the right amount of room right here with the balancer. Go ahead and just turn it some, and let's let's lower it right there, just so it's not so high. Got it. Bring it down just a skosh. Hopefully that skosh ain't at like two foot per <laughs> high speed, full speed, low speed, high speed. That should work until we get our get our deal. Go grab the trusty Harbor Freight engine stand that we use and then we get the pan, we'll roll it over, pop the pan off, look down in there and probably see some piston missing. That'll do. Poor thing, look at it, all empty. Oh, sad days. Sad days. Gone, gone. You're gonna open up all sorts of engine room. Gone with all the other crap. It's all going away. All right, pull this back, try to rotate it around. So Carter got in a fight with the, the soap dispenser, so he's smelling the shop up now. Says he smells like a girl, but best smelling thing in the shop, Carter. It wasn't my fault, you set me up. <laughs> it's, the, it's the trick soap dispenser. There, oh yeah, more water. Real nice. Making messes. Yeah, that's what we're doing today, boys. Whew. All right, let's peel this pan off here, and we're gonna we're gonna see how bad it is, at least from the underside. Then I can go through later and pull the heads and everything off. But if there's a major hole in a piston. We'll be able to find out right now. So if you guys were wondering what the pan number is, it's on here somewhere. I know a couple of you guys asked in the, one of the other videos. So it's 20142. And I have ran a stock F body pan with the uh, like improved baffle or whatever. I still saw scavenging with that pan. I put this pan on, the Moroso, gave you that number, seven quart pan and 90 PSI oil all the way down the track. No issues with scavenging with this pan. Uh, we also have this one on the Buick stuff. Shows great oil pressure even on the half mile, all of that. So this pan is highly worth the money. Would definitely recommend if you guys are building something that needs to go. And I don't know if this would fit with like the stock uh, F-Body K member, but with a tubular K member, this will clear it. So it's tight, but it, it fits. We should note that Alex did wear different boots today. Thank goodness, because he's I mean, if he was in his other boots, he'd be on the ground right now standing in that fluid, so. No, that's only on that slick square back there. <laughs> the, the back square's that's the one? the only square <laughs> concrete floor that I've slipped. That always gets you. Extensions on extensions. Yep. On extensions, oh yeah. Again, we are not professional mechanics. We are two guys in a shop with some tools and a car. <laughs> uh -huh. Zero professional uh, training. What do they call it, school of hard knocks? This would be a school of broken parts. 
and it happens. It smells weird. All right, boys. Here we go. More moment of truth here. This could be, I know it's not gonna be good. It could be really bad or it could be not so bad. Let's see what we got. We got a lot of, a lot of shit in the pan. That's, that's for sure. I'm looking for, so it was six. It's these two right here. Yep, there's a hole in a piston right there. And we'll have to rotate this one in. I don't know if you guys can see that. This bottom corner in here. See that right there? Missing piston. Right down on that. If you look right along the cylinder wall right there. So I got that piston good. I'll have to rotate it around, we'll see. We'll look at this cylinder. These are the two that it had the bad plugs in it. On the side, it looks okay over here. Mm, that piston doesn't look, that piston doesn't look bad. I bet it hurt six again. And that's that's the one that it melted before. Uh, this one doesn't look that bad, actually. What's crazy. Uh, Is this a driver? So this would be, oh yeah. So actually this is the one that melted. This one actually, I mean it had a hurt piss, or a hurt uh, spark plug, but actually yeah, five's the one that shows actually that it's really bad. I'll have to zip the heads off and actually like dig deeper into the motor, but at least we can tell that it's had a hurt piss. And that's why I didn't worry about like doing a compression tech check or anything. Cause I knew if you guys look at the pan here, uh, you can see all the, all the material from melting the piston and all that, so that's that's no good. See it? Mm -hmm. Or it looks all chewed up. Where it's got the big old notch taken out of that center? Yep. <laughs> that busted the ring and stuff right there. Yep. Scored the wall a little bit. So this is the one that should have the sleeve in it from when they sleeve the block. I don't see it, but. Ah! Oh. Makes you mad even though you already knew that that's what it was gonna be. <laughs> oh well. So yeah, guys, that's uh, kind of sucks, but I'm gonna, in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the heads off, completely tear down the motor, look at everything. Something I did wanna look at. Yeah, see, it doesn't move around a lot right now. Look at all the chunks of material too on the pickup tube. But this uh, reluctor wheel is not moving around a lot, but that's what was rubbing the pickup. And I always wondered if there's a weird issue with it. If you guys can see, you wanna come over here, Sean? Kind of shoot it from the other side. You guys can see how close the reluctor wheel is right there to the uh, crank sensor. So it's been rubbing, and I think that's what's been knocking the crank sensors out of this motor. So I don't know if like these are moving around, if this is bent a little bit, I'm not too sure. I'll have to look at this, but this is where this is like a factory style reluctor wheel, and they'll put a billet style reluctor wheel on there. So at minimum, I wanna at least do that. If, if this is all repairable to like pop a new piston in it and replace the reluctor wheel, maybe do that, put new bearings in it and stuff. But um, we're gonna have to look at a few things, but that's definitely super close to the, the crank sensor. It's like it almost touches it right there. So I don't know uh, exactly what the gap's supposed to be. I know it's tight, but we'll have to check it for run out and stuff, see if maybe the reluctor wheel has some play in it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Those are some little battles I've kind of had. It's never been too much of an issue. I mean, over the couple of years, it's only popped up like twice, two or three times, I guess. But uh, so we'll read look at the reluctor wheel and then We'll find out how bad this cylinder is here. So yeah, six had a bad plug in it, five. Five looks like it melted, six actually. From this side of it, I can't see any melted piston, which is, I guess, a good thing. Well, we're gonna have to at least fix five and go from there. All right guys, so in the next video, you'll see we're gonna tear this engine down and we'll get a real close look at exactly the damage, probably start 
pulling the piston out, looking at the cylinder wall and everything, see if this thing's salvageable, if it hurt the block real bad. Like I said, in the other one, it had a sleeve number six. Maybe number six is all right. Maybe it's just number five on this one, even though the plug was hurt. Maybe it only really hurt one cylinder. But we're going to find out next time. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in a few days. So we're not quite done yet. I'm, I'm just debating on if I'm going to pull it all apart. But we all started talking. I figured this would be good information for you guys. Uh, where I'm sitting at right now is more or less if I wanted to put a built long block in this thing, good heads, six bolt block, all that stuff. You're, I mean, you're talking somewhere between like 15 and 20 grand for that. This thing is pretty much useless unless I fix it. So it's going to cost, you know, a few hundred to probably anywhere from like 500 to 1,000 to fix this setup the way that it is up to maybe two grand last time that it hurt itself real bad. It was like two grand. So I'm, I'm in this like weird state of do I just fix this, get it back in, build a new turbo kit, and then eventually hopefully get a six bolt deal. It's just a hard battle. It, it's, you know, financially when you get to a point like this, it's like, yeah, it'd be nice to go do everything new, but it's all extremely expensive stuff too, especially like the next stage up gets even more expensive. So I'm just gonna get this thing apart. We'll figure out cost wise on everything. This needs to at least go back together. And if this becomes like a spare to Bernie, like that's fantastic. It's an expensive spare for Bernie and what I do to that. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure this whole thing out. I'll know more once I get like that piston out. If it got into the block, if it hurt the block, then it gets really bad because you got to replace the block. If it's just a piston and I can put this thing back together for, you know, a thousand bucks and then replace that reluctor wheel and hopefully that fixes some of my issues long term, then maybe I just do that, put this back in, swap up the turbo kit, do all my other changes, then eventually put a six bolt deal in it. So still not exactly sure where we're at, but I figured turn the camera back on, explain to you guys kind of in my head, that's where, that's where the struggle's at. I mean, it's an extremely expensive route to go the other way, and I don't really want to spend that money at this point, but if that needs to head, the, the other side of that is if I decide to spend that money, we're just gonna go out, like it's gonna push the car out. Instead of being back together in three or four months, it might be seven or eight months type of a thing if that's what I end up doing. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Fix the 408, get it back together, save for the six bolt. Just do it all in one, one whack. I even thought about, I got another L83 over there, aluminum block, save 100 pounds. I thought about putting a Gen 5 LT in this thing and uh, just doing a rod and piston. They sell like a rod and piston combo drop in deal. I don't know, all the options and uh, some money to spend here in the future. But yeah, guys, that's, that's what happened after we turned the camera off. We were deciding like what's next. Again, that's where my head's at. So again, guys, we'll see you next time.